This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. All right, we've had a wild week when it comes to currencies. The euro falling to 135 against the U.S. dollar. Can we expect more? We've got an expert. We've got Michael Walfolk of Bank of New York Mellon. Michael, thank you for coming into Bloomberg. And thank you. You just got off a plane from San Francisco. You've been in the air all day. How can you stand to be away from the markets for a whole six hours? In these conditions, it is difficult, Pim. Now, you are now you're telling me you were holding some hands out on the West Coast. Why? Because because people were what? They were short the U.S. dollar going into the week? I think that uh, out on the West Coast, uh, throughout uh, the world, uh, th there are uh players that are uh, uh, short dollars and, and are a little concerned about that. Uh, the market as a whole has moved from being uh, short dollars to more neutral with uh, uh, real money uh, moving to the sidelines amidst this uh, crisis that we've seen emerge in Greece and the uh, European peripherals. What do you think happens next? I mean, it, I, I was speaking earlier with Jonathan Auerbach of Auerbach Grayson, and he said he <laughs> thinks everyone is making a little too much of this Greek crisis. He thinks that it is kind of just providing head lines for price movement in the currency markets, and he doesn't see any real big structural changes. Well, let's be clear about one thing. This is being speculatively driven initially, but if you're able to turn the boat in terms of market confidence, sentiment, which has happened, uh, you uh, can uh, cause a contagion effect. We've seen that before. I, I think that what we've seen, however, uh, is uh, th this Greek problem develop uh, in an uh, environment that was, was really risk off. Uh, if this uh, had developed six months ago, it lar would have been largely ignored. We, we know that Greek has had deficit problems. They, they had deficit problems before they joined the euro. Uh, there are many others. It's a slippery slope going down this road. Uh, Portugal, Spain have similar problems. Central and Eastern Europe, even the core countries of Germany and France have deficit problems, as, as we do. So uh, I, I think that uh, what the EU uh, and its leadership uh, needs to do is uh, uh, make it uh, clear that they will provide a backstop for uh, Greek debt as well as uh, throughout the, the Eurozone. Uh, they haven't done that to the market satisfaction just yet. Well, I mean, it's possible to do it in a lot of different ways, right? Because, I mean, it turns out that the Greek government debt is mainly held by non-Greeks. So <laughs> there you have that kind of speculative aspect yes. to the market. They could continue to drive the price for Greek debt higher uh, without any real change in Greek finances. No, that's a very good uh, point. Uh, interestingly enough, those that do hold Greek debt are largely Western Europeans within the Eurozone. So it really is in their best interests to make sure that this crisis really doesn't get going any further than it already has. All right, so hold our hand on currencies a little bit more and tell us where do you see some of the currency trades? Let's say yeah. uh, out next week, we know options expiration in the equity sure. markets is happening. Well, what do we expect? Uh, anything else in the strengthening of the U.S. dollar against, you know, you've talked in the past, the loony commodity-based uh, currencies, the Australian dollar? Well, I think that the uh, Aussie dollar has become oversold against the yen uh, and uh, the majors. Uh, I would expect that if we do get a more definitive backstop statement, uh, commitment on behalf of Germany or a, a group of Eurozone countries to, to support Greek debt, uh, that that would clearly have a, a positive signal to markets. Look for Aussie yen to respond favorably, the Dow, global bourses to do well. Uh, I think in that type of environment, you, you want to be short yen and uh, I wouldn't be looking for further dollar gains in that type of environment. I wouldn't go so far as to be buying euros, but I think the emerging markets, Mexico, Brazil, others are, are likely to do quite well in a rebound of uh, market sentiment. Were you at all surprised by the swiftness that the euro fell against the dollar? Not, not really. I mean, certainly that's one of the uh, elements that in currency markets officials uh, are focused on, and that is disorderly movements. The, the movement in the euro dollar, the, the euro against uh, uh, the, the yen, the euro crosses, uh, was certainly uh, uh, remarkable. Uh, was uh, a sustained move, uh, but it, it wasn't disorderly. We've seen, you know, much larger moves before. Uh, this this was a movement really of the market being uh, largely short dollars, using the dollar as a carry trade currency along with the yen, more back towards a, a, a neutral. Now, how far could this go? I mean, there is a worst case scenario here. Uh, go ahead, but, spell uh, it out for us. <laughs> What's the worst case scenario? <laughs> well, cer certainly, uh, if a contagion effect did. Uh, precipitate. 
maybe put only about a 10 percent probability on that, Pim. But if you did have that type of scenario where uh, Germany refused to stand up and, and support Greece, uh, if contagion did sweep to other peripherals, I mean, it, perhaps, uh, worst case scenario, the euro dollar could move to 1.25. Uh, that, that's a worst case scenario. I, I, I don't expect that to be the case, but if it did, then you might be talking about uh, a disorderly movement. Well, if it did, you're going to have to come and hold both hands. <laughs> oh, not just one hand. I want to thank you very much, thank Michael you. Wolfo, coming in Bank of New York Mellon, expert in currencies. Appreciate your guidance on what's going on with the euro and the dollar. Thank you.